Welcome back to the capnography tutorial. Um, in part one of the tutorial, we discussed uh, a lot of the anatomy and physiology and how we get uh, carbon dioxide readings. In part two, we discussed much of the difference uh, between oxygenation and ventilation and the different things we can measure from entitled CO2. Uh, in this part, uh, in part three, we are going to discuss some of the uh, capnography values that you might see that might be coming alarming and what to do if, for instance, you have an intubated patient that has a bad capnography value come back at you. All right, so there is no better indicator of proper ET tube placement than waveform capnography. We discussed that in part one to death. Uh, the presence of waveform indicates a tube is correctly placed and that is undoubtable. If you, if you intubate somebody, you put capnography on their tube and you get a value back with good plateaus, you have them correctly intubated in the trachea. Okay, there, You can get some, uh, some capnography values from CO2 from other things. If, if, let's say if you intubated them and it went into the esophagus Okay, and, and you have an esophageal intubation you can have some values come back because maybe they had soda in their belly or maybe they had a prolonged period of time where you were doing uh, mouth to mask ventilation and then there was some CO2 kind of you know transposing itself into the into the belly and now that's coming out but you're not gonna get these plateaus that you see over here on the left uh, with that alright so if you get these plateaus you've you've uh, successfully intubated them in the trachea Okay, this would be bad, right? I mean, if you've got somebody intubated uh, and you all of a sudden go from a plateau to a flat line, that's not necessarily good. Also, you would get this, well, you wouldn't get the plateau, but you would get this flat line if somebody was in cardiac arrest um, and for a very long time. For instance, if you, if you have somebody that is a, a fresh kill, so to speak, uh, if they've recently gone down and you start CPR on them, their values won't be zero. They, they'll have low capnography values, but certainly not zero. This would be uh, found, a, a value of zero would be found on somebody that you know probably has rigor mortis because they've been down for so long. You might want to consider getting the sheet and, and not you know firefighters to start chest compressions. Uh, spontaneous apnea is also a possibility, uh, but remember, that person is not ventilating. This is gonna occur three reasons. You're ventilating somebody that's been dead for way too long. You have somebody that's intubated and suddenly becomes extubated, extubated, or you have somebody that just isn't breathing. Okay, this would be apnea. On the in intubated patient, if you get an entitled CO2 value of zero, you need to consider your dope pneumonic. Okay, dope pneumonic, dislodgement, obstruction, pneumothorax, equipment. Dislodgement, obstruction, pneumothorax, equipment. Okay, the tube should not be the last thing you check. It should be the first thing. Uh, so check the tube. All right, see if it's become dislodged. You're going to do that with lung sounds. Uh, you're going to do that. Uh, you might want to visualize it again. Uh, see if, that it's become, if it's become dislodged or not. See if there's an obstruction. Try suctioning down the tube. All right, uh, listen to lung sounds again. Pneumothorax. Check lung sounds again. Uh, look for symmetrical chest rise and fall. Check for all those things that go along with the pneumothorax because it's a possibility, especially if it was a trauma patient. And then equipment would be the last thing you're going to check. If they were on a ventilator, use a BVM and see if you can get entitled CO2 with a BVM. If they're on oxygen, please make sure that the ventilator you know, is getting oxygen. oxygen and there, Some vents, uh, especially pre-hospital vents, require oxygen to work at all. So you need to make sure that your, your oxygen bottle isn't empty. So use your dope mnemonic to troubleshoot these intubated patients uh, that suddenly get an uh, entitled CO2 value of zero. Here's a trick that uh, I learned from, there's a capnography blog out there. If you just kind of Google capnography blog, you'll be able to find it. And the trick was if you attach an entitled CO2 detector onto the ET tube prior to intubating. As you get close to the uh, glottic opening, to the vocal cords, you're gonna start getting some numbers back 
on your on your machine on your monitor that will let you know that you're getting close to the to the trachea or to the vocal cords. That's that's a good trick to use because it helps you kind of guide in your tube along with visualizing it passing through the cords, and it, it will be useful if CPR is in progress because the process of them pushing down on the chest will actually cause CO2 to come out of the lungs. And it'll be very useful to use that trick, uh, put the capnography device on the tube before you even enter the tube into the mouth. And you know, as you're looking around trying to get this patient intubated, you'll start seeing a little bit of waveform uh, come up uh, on the screen as you're intubating. It's kind of a cool trick. Capnography can be used with uh, superglottic devices as well. So your King tube, your eye gel or LMA, um, all these new devices that are coming out to be used in cardiac arrest, you can use capnography with those devices, okay? It's only going to benefit you, okay, as the clinician. It's only going to benefit you to get capnography on these patients because in the end, you're going to want to show that you had good ventilation. Um, and also, you know, for instance, if you're working at cardiac arrest again um, and you have maintained values of capnography below 20, that might be a good indicator to say that this patient is not going to survive, all right? So it's just, it's just like having a patient that's been apneic and pulseless and asystolic for a very long period of time, and you call in to get maybe orders to terminate resuscitation efforts if your system allows you to do that, um, giving a low capnography value that's been sustained as a low value for a prolonged period of time is, is just an extra thing to show that this patient's not going to be able to survive. Um, conversely, though, if they do get a spike in values or if they do get normal values, that's a good, good indicator that they, they are going to start reperfusing and uh, have a return of spontaneous circulation. This is just a cool image that kind of gives you the idea. Uh, this, is, I guess, is supposed to be an endotracheal tube. Uh, when it goes into the esophagus, you get... I'm sorry, that was into the trachea. When it goes into the esophagus, you get zero values. When it goes into the trachea, you get plateau. Into the esophagus, nothing. Into the trachea, plateau. I think I made that point already, but the image was cool. And then this is the last slide of uh, this part. Waveform versus color metric capnography. I mentioned before that they are worlds apart. Uh, in color metric capnography, a filter is attached to an ET tube. Uh, it changes color from purple to yellow. The, the, uh, the paper here. And that kind of detects carbon dioxide is present. It's the litmus paper, right? Uh, it is not continuous. It has no waveform. It has no number, no alarms, is easily contaminated, and is hard to read in the dark. And it can give you false readings. So it's not really that great. In fact, to the point of where, as you know, paramedics, we've kind of, those of us that have gotten waveform capnography, might not even put these on anymore on our BVMs because they're almost useless in that sense. Yeah, a lot of the old timers have found it useful uh, in the past, but now that you have waveform capnography, it, I don't see it, uh, a great use for it. Um, so yeah, if you want to continue to use this device, do it, but do it in conjunction with waveform capnography because like I said, they're worlds apart and the information that they're gonna give you uh, and just just not as good of a tool. So that's the end of this part, this part three. Um, I promise you we're going to get into the good pathology stuff. Uh, in this part, it's just important to remember the dope mnemonic for a sudden value of zero on your intubated patient. Dislodgement, obstruction, pneumothorax, equipment. Remember that, and uh, you're going to treat your patients well in the future. All right, I'll see you in part four.